What's up guys, Parker here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to display the previous 12 months of data based on one date selection. This might be pretty hard to wrap your mind around, so let me go ahead and dive into the demo. So recently I had a client ask me that if they selected uh, one date, they want to show the previous 12 months of data, uh, which is kind of counterintuitive because uh, by default, Power BI is going to allow you to select a date and it's going to filter down uh, the graph just to show one date. So in this case, it'd be one column and one point on the line. But as you see, I've selected uh, 8-31-2012 and we show uh, the data from 8-31-2012 all the way back to 8-31-2012. So if we select another date, we'll see that it dynamically changes to show our selected date to the previous 12 months of data. Um, and if we don't select a date, it's just gonna select our most recent month, which is January 31st, 2014, back to January 31st, 2013. So there's a kind of cool trick that you can do uh, just by creating a measure with a disconnected table. Um, so let's go ahead and dive into how you would do this. Uh, so I have another file here with the same tables loaded in. I'm using AdventureWorks DW 2014. So let's go ahead and bring in a combo chart here. And this fact internet sales table has a field called end of month date. So it's basically just the date rounded to the end of the month. And we'll bring in sales amount as well. And we'll put that into columns or column values. And then we're gonna have a nice column chart. And just to show you the default functionality, here is a slicer and I'll throw in end of month date as well. And we'll change that to a list. So by default, you select one date, it's gonna just filter down to one date. Or if you select multiple, it's gonna just show you the two that you've selected. Um, but we want to disconnect our date table to this graph to be able to show the previous 12. So we don't actually wanna use a slicer with a date from the same table. In fact, we wanna create a new table by going to modeling, new table, and we will create a date table and we'll set that equal to distinct end of month date. So basically I'm just gonna get the distinct values from our end of month date. Um, you can use any date column you want. So now that I have a new table, let's go ahead and check out the relationships view. And we wanna make sure that this date table is not connected to the fact internet sales table. And we can see it's kind of floating over here randomly by itself. Let's zoom back in and we see there's no relationship set up between the date table and the fact internet sales table. So as we go back um, to our visualizations, we can bring in a slicer from the, fa uh, from the date table now. We'll bring that in, change that to a list, and we'll see that this doesn't affect our visualization in any way, which is good. Um, one quick thing, I'm gonna go ahead and make this a date so it looks a little nicer and change the format of that. Um, let me go ahead and bring that back in. So slicer, end of month. Okay, there we go, that looks a little bit better. Then we can see that clicking on a selection in this end of month date does not affect the visualization. So what we need to do is we need to create a new measure and we're gonna call this TTM sales. So all of the magic here is gonna happen in a measure. And the idea is basically if um, we're gonna calculate the total sales for the previous 12 month period and anything outside of that 12 month period is gonna be blank. So since it'll be blank, it's just going to filter the, visuals, uh, the visualization down to show you where values are not blank. That might make a little bit more sense in just a second. So let's go ahead and create a couple of variables to grab our current values. So if we do a variable current date, we're gonna set this equal to max of the end of month date from the date table. So it's basically gonna harness um, this selection from our date end of month date and then we want to create a variable for the previous date this is my bad this is 
basically going to select the value 12 months before. So previous date. We're going to do a little bit of date math here. We're going to set that equal to the date function using the year of our current date, the month of our current date, but we're going to subtract 12 months from that and the day from current date as well. So if you just want to see what um, that evaluates to, let's go ahead and return previous date just as a little test. And we'll go ahead and throw this in a card. And we see that the previous date is 831-2010 when 831-2012 was selected. So that's perfect actually. So let's go ahead back to uh, our measure definition. And just a couple more things here. We're actually going to create a new variable which we'll call result. And we'll set that equal to a calculate statement. So we're going to calculate the sum of the sales amount. So sales amount is what we're going after here. That's our main, um, that's our main value. And we need to filter the fact internet sales table. But we need to specifically filter this fact internet sales table to only show us values between our previous date and current date. So we do that by saying at end of month date is greater than or equal to previous date and end. Uh, end of month date is less than or equal to current date. Close off the filter, close off calculate, and we will return our result. And you don't need to store this in a result variable, but I just decided to. So if we go ahead and click OK, that is our entire measure. So we can go ahead and delete sales amount now, and instead we will throw in TTM sales. And we see we only have so many bars here. Uh, as we click on 831.2012, we see that we show values for 821.2012 all the way back to 831.2011. And just to reiterate, the reason this is working right now is because this date selection has nothing to do with the date axis uh, shown in the visual. We can see that in the visual, it's pulling the end of month date from fact internet sales, but the slicer is pulling the end of month date from the date table. And since there's no relationship, we can specify when we select something from the date table, how we want to use that in a calculation based on a measure. So this measure is getting our date selection from the date table. It's subtracting 12 months from that date to give us the range we want to show values for. And then it's explicitly saying only give me values if our factor net sales end of month date is within that period that we just defined. So that's how you set this up. Um, let's go ahead and go through um, that one more time just to show the tax as well. We'll actually just copy this. And we'll do the same thing for tax. Um, so the only thing we'll actually have to change here is this tax amount. But just one step through, we're getting the current date we're subtracting 12 months from that current date to get the previous date. So we now have our big range. And then we're creating a result variable where we calculate the sum of tax amount, but we're filtering down the fact internet sales table to where the end of month date is greater than the previous date and less than the current date. So if we go ahead and click enter there, just one quick change and throw this in the line chart or throw this in as a line value. We get a nice little visualization that looks like that. So it's dynamic just like the sales measure is. And to note, when you, uh, when you get rid of all of your selections, it is taking the max date. So it's just gonna show you the last 12 months from the last value you have in your data. So that's all I wanted to show you. 
Um, I hope you like this video. It's a really interesting trick in case you um, in case you ever get a requirement like this. I actually just got a requirement like this from my client. Um, and it's a little bit harder to set up than you might think. Uh, so go ahead and give this a try. It's not too, too hard once you know the basic methodology. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I will see you.